So why microscopy? Well, first off, what is microscopy? Well, scope means to look and micro means small. So we're looking at small things. Telescope means far looking. Tele means far. And so telephone, right, right. And so we're just looking at things that are so small that they cannot be seen with the naked eye. And we use a lens to do that. We use light to make things clearer and sharper. The very first magnifying glasses were made by lens makers for, that were making glasses. And they started making individual lenses to magnify and make smaller things bigger. And this was really our first microscope-esque thing. And that was in the 1300s. And it wasn't until hundreds of years later that we saw something that looked like the microscope we have today. The compound microscope it was in the 1600s. And there's a debate, it's a hot debate, about who actually created the first microscope. <laughs> but it was the early 1600s, we do know. And then it was Antony van Leeuwenhoek, the father of microbiology, that was a citizen scientist, just like us, that did better work than the Royal Academic Societies had ever seen before. And it was higher quality than, than anything they'd ever done. And because of that, he was the first to see microbes. He called them animacules. Isn't that funny? Animacules. And this was the late, mid-1600s, 100 years before America declared its independence. They discovered the first microbes. And it was this citizen scientist making his own microscopes, making his own special lenses that allowed us to see down to that depth and with that clarity. So we are really just continuing the tradition that began microscopy from, from the outset. It's a citizen science-based practice. So we're just continuing on with the original spirit of the science. We've come a long way since then. And we've developed many forms of microscopy, many different types of microscopes. We have digital microscope, we have pocket microscope, we have microscope attachments or our phones. But it's even more useful today because we know so much more now. All the experience, all the studies, and the quality of the tools we have has changed everything. Yet, most microscopy today still is being done with a basic light microscope system. And, you know, hold that thought for a second because we'll come back to that. It's such a big deal. They're still using the same basic form. But first, let's get back to why microscopy. Because the microscope, even the, the light microscope, it is the linchpin. It is the seat at which all the other sciences meet. It is the linchpin tool and context and perspective and, and point of view, literal view, that gives us the common ground between all the different sciences. Because it's not a number, it's not an extrapolation, it's not a chart, it's what you see. It's if you see, you know, you're actually seeing these things. So it's the actual context, it's not an extrapolation. Everything else is. And it's the linchpin across all soil science and across many different branches of science as well because it allows us to see how things are functioning in the microscopic world in real time. We see it. And, you know, we've only just begun to see things as they are because of the rise in recent years of technology. If we think about the historical context more um, of microscopy, identifying mycorrhizal fungi, it happened pretty early on, but pretty early on is the late 1800s, so 1885. And then we think about differentiating archaea from bacteria because for a long time we thought they were the same thing. That happened in 1977. And then identifying that streptomyces was actually bacteria, not fungi. That was the late 80s, early 90s. That was only then that we could differentiate the false fungi from real fungi. And then the first commercial inoculants arrived in the late 80s and 90s. Endophytes became understood as 
ubiquitous and healthy and wild plants in the early 2000s. Things getting kind of crazier, huh? And then rhizophagy was the mid 2010s. And then the first 4K microscope cameras were the mid 2010s. 4K cameras in general started off in the early 2010s, 2010s. And then the LED epifluorescence microscopy was the late 2010s, right before 2020. And so I don't know if you've noticed something, but things are speeding up. The innovations are coming closer and the breakthroughs are coming closer and closer together. There's a ramp, there's a hockey stick effect. They talk about how we live in exponential times, how everything is speeding up. Innovation is speeding up. The speed of processing is speeding up. The battery storage is speeding up. The, uh, the, the amount of information we can store is, spe is increasing exponentially. And, and things are doubling every year. And we're seeing that also happen in all branches of science. As people are using tools that are advanced enough and understandable enough for it to reach the citizen science level. Because what more often than not happens is people do things in a lab. People do things with the same soil or extension soils or in the context of synthetic ag and they get a consistent result in that limited circumstance and they're tricking themselves. They created the circumstances for that result to exist. And we've only had the tools recently to actually see what the natural context is like. That's why these, all these, these discoveries have happened so recently because the technology is getting better. And people are asking, actually, actually asking these questions. What if you could verify if your compost was actually doing its job? What if you could verify if the inoculants, the mycorrhizal inoculants, the biofertilizers are actually worth the money spending on them? It is all possible. And it's all things you can learn in the Regenerative Soil Microscopy 20 week online course. If you want to learn how to not just understand your soil, but to see that the things you're doing are actually working, that the money that you're gonna spend or, or have spent was worth it so you don't get fooled again. This is the pathway. We need holistic testing, we need holistic microscopy, and we need to combine them in a new methodology, regenerative soil microscopy. I hope you join us. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. I'll see you soon.